This is the 57th lecture in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. This lecture is going to cover fiber optic connector inspection and cleaning. Back in the early 1980s, when I first visited a phone company's central office that was installing fiber optics, one of the technicians pulled a patch cord out of a panel and showed it to me. And he said, you know, these optical fibers are the size of human hairs. And they're very, very sensitive to dirt. So we have to keep them clean. And this is how he cleaned it. Today, we know a lot better ways of keeping fiber optic connectors clean. And we know how to inspect them. We do microscope inspections for polishing quality and cleanliness. We clean connectors. And for connectors in the field, we inspect them, clean them, inspect them again to determine the effectiveness of our cleaning. And we repeat it as necessary. When we terminate a fiber, we want it to look like this, perfectly polished and spotless. Not like this, covered with scratches and contamination and dirt. As we start using connectors in the field, we want to make sure that they're not only perfectly polished, but they're not dirty and contaminated, like this connector, or this one. haven't been damaged with scratches, for example, like this one from handling. Contaminated by liquid, like this one. Or have a fingerprint on the end of a ferrule from being touched by a finger. In fact, oily skin can leave a really nasty residue, like this. And it's not just connectors that have been used in the field. This is a view of a connector fresh from a sealed package that its patch cord came in. It came from the factory looking like this. A clean connector can get contaminated by a dirty connector when they're mated. The connector on the upper left is clean the one on the lower left is dirty, and you can see what happens with both connectors over repeated matings. In order to ensure connectors are clean and in good condition, we inspect them with microscopes. Back in the 80s, we used small, simple microscopes at about 100 power, and then during the early 2000s, we started getting more professional microscopes at 200 to 400 power. And these were just visual inspection tools. We'd look at a connector, make a judgment on whether it was good or bad. Today, you can get video microscopes that interface to a laptop, a tablet, or a smartphone. They give you a bigger view and more magnification, so they're easy to see, and you can even share images and capture a picture of the connector for your records. But the big thing they do that is particularly important in the manufacturing environment is they automate the analysis of the end of the connector. These video inspection microscopes inspect connectors to an IEC standard that sets limits for dirt and scratches on zones around the fiber in the center. The problem with automated inspection like this is it focuses on the center of the ferrule where the fiber is. You can see inside the red line on the ferrule on the connector on the right. And so if there's dirt or dust outside the zones that it analyzes, that connector can still be passed as good, but it will be a dirty connector. That's why human inspection is often very important to make sure the connectors are really nice and clean as they should be. 
One manufacturer offers a really interesting microscope that's a wide field view. It uses low magnification. It looks at the whole connector and the ferrule, including the sides, to show sources of dirt. Dirt on the side of the ferrule or in the cavity of the connector can get on the end of the fiber and cause problems. So knowing that the entire connector is clean is actually very important. Patch quarry manufacturers who do large volume of single mode terminations also do their inspection with single mode fiber using an interferometer. The interferometer can determine the shape of the end of the ferrule. It can find minuscule scratches and can determine if the end of the connector is really acceptable. But these instruments are too expensive for most field use, so that's why we rely on the standard visual microscope and often with an operator making a judgment of how good a connector really is in the field and particularly how clean it is. We started this video showing you the wrong way to clean a connector. Now we want to talk about the right way. How to use the proper cleaning equipment to properly clean connectors. There are three methods that are widely used to clean connectors and we basically refer to them by the process. Wet, dry, and wet and dry. Years ago, most of us used a wet cleaning method to clean our connectors. We'd use an alcohol-saturated lint-free pad to wipe the end of the ferrule. The problem is that alcohol isn't exactly the best cleaner, and when it evaporates, it can still leave a residue. It's better to use special cleaners, and even better to use different methods, like a wet-dry method. An alternative to the wet method was introduced years ago, and it's dry cleaning. Here you use a specially treated lint-free tape or pad to wipe the end of the ferrule. These are quite convenient because these tools can be used to actually go up into the receptacle on a patch panel to clean a connector or to clean the output or input of transceivers. The problem is that dry cleaning isn't always the most efficient, but it works very well for many people in the field. The best method of cleaning is to use a wet-dry method, where you use a solvent to clean off the end of the connector and then dry it off on a lint-free pad. It's pretty simple using one of these cube-type cleaners and some solvent. Simply wet a small spot on the cube to clean the connector. Just touch it to the wet spot and slide it to the dry side. The lip-free wipe will remove all the contamination that's been dissolved by the cleaner. You can do something similar with the dry probe type cleaners that we showed you earlier. Simply take one of the probes, get it slightly damp, use it to clean the connector, and then use the second probe, a dry one, to dry it off. You'll get much better results with that kind of technique. The overall technique for inspection and cleaning of connectors is like this. You inspect a connector. If it's good, you connect it. If it's bad, you clean it and inspect it again and continue checking, cleaning, and inspecting until it comes out good and it's ready to be connected. The goal is simple. Any connector, even one that looks like the one on the left, needs to be thoroughly cleaned and inspected so that when you actually connect it, it looks like the one on the right. Very simple. Well, we don't want you 
to use your breath and your shirt to clean fiber optic connectors on a daily basis. But it is an, actually an excellent experiment to do in the lab. You have a microscope and a cleaning kit and some connectors. Here's a few things to try. Examine connectors with a microscope and see what they look like, including some from fresh, brand new patch cords out of seal packages. Choose random connectors on the cables that are uncleaned. Clean those connectors and re-examine them. See how much better they look. Try cleaning with both wet and dry and wet dry methods. If you do the wet method, air dry the connector and examine the residue. Touch the connector with the end of your finger or rub in a carpet. Examine it, then clean it and re-examine it and see how hard it is to get clean. And okay, go ahead and try cleaning the connector by rubbing it on your shirt. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the International Professional Society of Fiber Optics, and the recognized certifying body for fiber optic technicians worldwide. You can go to our website, foa.org, where you'll find our online technical guide with almost a thousand pages of technical material, and FiberU, where we offer free self-study programs to help you learn about all sorts of subjects in fiber optics.